Hey guys, Greg here, let's solve rotate image, lead code number 48. So we're given an n by n 2D matrix that is representing an image, and we need to rotate that image by 90 degrees clockwise, and you have to do it in place. So they don't want you to allocate another matrix. So let's say we are given this example here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We want to rotate it clockwise. So that's gonna put that one, two, three on the top down to the right column. The three, six, nine will then be going across the bottom. The nine Eight, seven that was on the bottom is now going to be going up and it will be seven four one now that also happens in the middle so a little more complex example here five one nine eleven that is going to be the right column there then eleven ten seven sixteen that's going to be the bottom there sixteen twelve fourteen fifteen that'll go up the top and then we have that fifteen thirteen two five that'll be going across and then in the middle there it also has that same effect four eight six three in that square that is going to shift over as well to be three four 86 instead. Now there's very clever ways to do the problem solving, but it's very easy if you simply just break it down into two steps, where the first step is going to be a transpose. And if you've done any linear algebra, you definitely know what this is. Basically, you turn every row into the column. So if the first row is one, two, three, then the first column will be one, two, three instead. So we get one, two, three going down. And then our second row is four, five, six. That'll be our second column. So four, five, six. And our last row, seven, eight, nine, will be our last column, 789. So basically what this thing is here, it's called the transpose, and it's basically just a reflection around the main diagonal. So notice that the diagonal elements actually stay the same, 159 and 159. But then basically, if you look at something across from each other on the diagonal, like this four and the two here, well, those are just swapped. So these here, these positions are swapped. And same thing with the three and the seven. These are basically their symmetrical elements, and those are swapping right to there. So what this means more mathematically is if you have an ij, you basically just swap that with its ji. That's all that it means. So if this position here was 0, 1, so i is 0 and j is 1, then this symmetrical one would be the opposite, which is 1, 0. You basically just flip those. So what's at ij is going to be at ji, and what's at ji is going to be at ij. So that's how you would do that kind of reflection on that diagonal, and so that's going to be your first step. Okay, so after we've done the transpose, this is is the transposed version, you just need to do a simple horizontal reflection on this, meaning that basically reflect on this vertical here. So then you would swap the seven and the one. So these would go across like that. You'd swap the eight and the two together, and you'd swap the nine and the three. And almost magically, boom, that is actually our rotated image here. So it turns out to get your rotation here, all you have to do is the transpose operation, and then you have to do a horizontal reflection which I'll just call HR. If you do those things, that's going to work. Okay, so of course you'd want N is equal to the length of the matrix. And then we'll first worry about the transpose operation. So you'd want to swap all the different IJs. So you'd want to look at all possible pairs of indices I and J. We do that with for I in the range of N and for J in the range of I plus one up until N. So matrix at I at J and matrix at J at I. That is is just going to be their opposite. Now the reflection is a little less intuitive, but you definitely want to go through each of the rows because you're trying to swap all of those rows. So we'll do that for i in the range of n. And then we just need to swap all of the positions in here. So we do actually for j in the range of n over 2. Now that's not going to feel very intuitive, but you can think about it. If we're basically trying to swap 1, 2, 3 and turn it into 3, 2, 1, well, you actually only need one operation to do that. You'd immediately just want to swap swap one and three with each other. So this is actually what that would do here, because if say n is equal to three, then three over two integer division is actually gonna be just one. So this force is just one operation. So let me show the code and then I can explain why this makes sense. So you end up swapping i at j and the matrix at i and n minus j minus one with each other. You're swapping those two things. So I'll just copy that. Okay, so what the idea here is that basically if you fix an i, we're stuck at a row, so we're trying to flip this row. And then J is going to be the first thing here. So J starts at the beginning. And then the last part of it will be N minus J minus one. So you can think of J as kind of your left pointer going right. And then N minus J minus one will be your right pointer going left. So hopefully you've done one of those two pointers problems and you can picture that. They're kind of squeezing in towards each other and we're always swapping those elements. Okay, and that actually is all we need to do here. 
we can submit that and that is going to work. And the time complexity of this solution, well, let's think about it. A for loop over i and j, and then another for loop over i and j. That's basically just n times n or n squared. You're doing n squared twice. So that's going to be big O of n squared. And the space complexity of this, luckily we are kind of forced to actually do it in place. And so that is going to be big O of one. I hope this was helpful guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.